Hey everybody, I got a deal I couldn't pass up on a guide camera and a guide scope. So I thought I would quickly share how I was going to set it up. Um, <clears throat> mostly because the guide camera is uh, a planetary camera. It's the SV Boney SV uh, 305C. So the SV305 Pro is the one that is the guide camera and as near as I can figure the main difference between the two cameras when it comes to guiding is that the Pro version has an ST4 port and this one does not. But since I'm using PHD2 for guiding and I'm wiring up the camera with a, a USB cable, I don't think that makes a difference. So uh, I've got this uh, SV305C camera. It's uh, this little guy here. And to go with that, I have the SV Boney uh, 165 40 millimeter guide scope. So I'm going to be putting these together. And uh, the reason I got these is I, I have uh, two rigs now. I've got my main uh, Sostron 6SE on a wedge, and now I've got the SLT mounted uh, little Nikon. Uh, F lens. So uh, with that one there, I'm going to be using the smaller guide scope, which I think is going to do better. It's going to weigh less and be less intrusive. And that's going to leave my SV Boney 50 millimeter guide scope uh, and 905C guide camera uh, sitting on the 6SE. And I won't have to worry about switching them back and forth uh, or uh, realigning and uh, rotating the optics or anything like that. So um, I'm going to cut the video and then uh, turn it back on when I'm over installing the camera. This is the camera itself. It uh, comes with a couple of adapters depending on how you're going to be connecting it to your telescope, including this one and a quarter inch nosing that you can use in a typical one and a quarter inch either eyepiece or tube. And uh, here's the scope itself and the scope uh, just reading from the fact sheet it is 175 millimeters I wasn't expecting to have uh, the adjustable rings I thought this one came with just the lockdown clamps point in fact the 30 millimeter version of the scope does come with uh, just lockdown bolts that hold it in place, whereas the 40 mil has the adjustable rings. Now I took out the tightening bolt on the eyepiece side here, or the camera side, in order to be able to fit it through the rings. And uh, I like to keep everything uh, aligned straight so that whatever I see through the guide cam matches what I see through the primary scope. Unless, of course, I've rotated the camera on the primary scope in order to uh, better frame my targets. Now, um, the guide scope actually comes with two extension tubes. One is 40 millimeters and the other one is 35, according to the fact sheet. Uh, and you can unscrew those in order to use this guide scope as a finder. Uh, and then near the front of the lens you have this piece here that unscrews and that gives you 15 millimeters of room to play in order to focus the lens. So the way that you focus this guide scope is by uh, screwing and unscrewing the the little lens at the very top that's that last component and then tightening and locking it in place with the locking ring. Tonight I'm going to be going after the Crescent Nebula, I believe that is NGC 6888. I did image it a couple of weekends ago. I went up to a dark sky campground. A um, fun trip where I was testing this little rig out, but I was testing it with a uh, 300 millimeter Uh, Nikon Teleron lens 
I made a video about that lens before. It was a cool little lens, but um, ultimately it uh, it had some collimation issues, and it just wasn't really meant for imaging. So I recently bought uh, a used, very cool lens, a lens that was manufactured between 1981 and 1999. That's uh, this guy here. This is the Nikon Nikkor uh, F lens. It's a fixed focal length, 300 millimeter. And it's just a beautiful lens. It, it has some issues when it comes to chromatic aberration in the blue frequencies. Uh, but it was never really intended, I think, for this type of astrophotography. So overall, I am very happy with what it can do. Editing note, this lens has seven optical components and is an ED lens. Uh, and if it is not an astrograph, then it is close. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is wait for nightfall. Uh, this piece here is adjustable, so I can adjust the lens in and out, so hopefully that's going to give me enough play to get focus on this camera. If not, I can move the camera back and forth uh, with a little spacer there and uh, then lock it into place. And um, if all goes well, I'm going to have a little guide camera to test with tonight. Holy moly, it's like four or five little raccoons just ran by. Another editing note, most animals are afraid of snakes, so to my mind, snake noises would frighten small animals away. And although I heard noises coming from underneath the deck for the rest of the night, I never did find those raccoons again. Alright, next thing to do, we need to download the driver in order to recognize the camera. Now I had an older SV Bonnie driver installed on this laptop since I was using the SV905C guide camera already. The driver is just downloadable off the SV Bonnie or SV Bonnie, if you would, uh, website. Now I like to move all of my software to essential locations, so just moving the driver over. Make a quick folder for Svibani on this laptop. I should really reorganize all the files that I have in here. So installing the driver itself. Uh, looks like the driver is not registered such that Microsoft recognizes it, but uh, I know where I got it from, so I'm allowing it to go ahead and install. And there's really no options to uh, to pick. When I went to test the camera, I actually ended up with a connectivity error. And it took me a few moments to figure out what I'd done wrong. And it turns out I plugged in the wrong end cable into my USB hub. Uh, the 305C comes with one main cable, and the other one I think is just the additional power cable if your port doesn't have enough power to run the camera. So now retesting or reconnecting the camera in PHD2 works just fine. And here I'm using the Svibani camera and not the ASCOM driver. 
So uh, the camera seeing stars, they're not entirely in focus, and I was trying to manually focus them for a little bit uh, before I opted to just uh, throw on a Batsonov mask and make short work of the focusing. I completed the EQ North alignment. I'm using the Nexstar SLT mount in equatorial mode. So I lined it up on Vega and CAF, and then I used uh, point craft plate solving in order to line up on NGC 6888. And here I went to turn on guiding, and I did the calibration, and I realized that I did not set the scope to calibrate first at uh, the meridian and equator, but um, I went ahead and let the calibration run anyway. I figured it would be close enough for a proof of concept. Uh, and uh, here we go, guiding's enabled. The specs on the guide scope say that this setup should be used for focal lengths of 720 or less. And I'm running a 300 millimeter lens, so this setup should be fine. All right, there we go. Looks like my polar alignment is slightly off using my polar alignment pen tube, uh, but all in all, guiding is going quite fine. So, uh, guide camera, SV305 color. This is the planetary camera, not the SV305 Pro. Uh, works quite well, uh, along with the SV165 40 millimeter guide scope. Uh, not too many issues setting things up. I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. And if you're thinking of getting or already have an SV305C and you're planning on using it for guiding, then I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching and clear skies.